with a sign that Sasha Banks could be returning to WWE soon and more. This is Wrestling Up. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. With him set to face Roman Reigns for the undisputed title this weekend, Logan Paul told Verge Magazine, If WWE fans don't already respect me after Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia on November 5th, you will be forced to respect me. You might not like me. I might not be your favorite wrestler, but you will have to respect what I can do in that ring, and that's my goal. I could give to who likes me or not, but you will always acknowledge that when I get in that ring, you are going to be entertained. That's my goal. It's been an evolution of how people I identify me when they see me in the streets, right? At first it was the Vine guy, and then it became I've seen your videos guy, then it became the YouTube guy, then it became yo, Paul something, right? Then Logan Paul, WWE Superstar. After all these years, I feel like that title is the one with the most validity. Not that I need to be validated, but also it's awesome that I'm validated with a title like that because immediately you get respect and at the end of the day, everyone just wants to be respected. I think it's really hard to not respect someone who's willing to get in that ring and sacrifice their body for the entertainment of millions of people. It's incredible. Speaking about The Rock on his Extreme Life podcast, Matt Hardy stated that he would have a difficult time in the modern era of pro wrestling. Nobody was more over than The Rock. Like that Stone Cold and Rock, they will run the joint. Rock knew exactly what he needed to do to get reactions from the crowd. And he was a master of it. No one was better. If you inserted it into today's pro wrestling where it's like mandatory, you're much more than like a caricature or cartoon and you have to go out and work an amazing match. It would be a lot more difficult for Rock. But like rock as far as being a character and being an amazing solid athlete doing more basic fundamental stuff nobody was better at constructing a match Touching on his time as the leader of Nexus, Wade Barrett revealed his thoughts on not being able to change in the WWE locker room, telling Ryan Satin on Out of Character, Genuinely, it was one of the dumbest things that I've ever experienced in my time in WWE. There was a person who was put in charge of us, who is no longer with the company, who decided that it would be appropriate for a faction of guys who were attacking the company to not be allowed in the locker room, which would absolutely make sense because in terms of Nexus, we were coming out of the crowd. We were perceived as outside who hadn't earned contracts in WWE, so it kind of made a bit of logical sense. Why am I main eventing Survivor Series? Why are we all main eventing SummerSlam, yet I'm not eligible to step in the locker room here? I'm gonna change in the hallway. Dinner ladies and catering staff and cleaners are walking past while I'm putting my gear on. I'm like, this is stupid. There's no benefit to this. There's no payoff to this whatsoever. Explaining his three-year absence from WWE after 2015, Rey Mysterio told The National that, I left because I was just tired physically, mentally, and I just wanted to reconnect with my family. But I always knew that I wanted to come back and I wanted to retire in WWE. My career was definitely going to end in WWE no matter what. I never really had any desire to go anywhere else. It has always been WWE. Now I know WWE has always been my home. During an interview with the Under the Ring podcast, former head writer for WWE, Brian Gewurz, revealed he still gives suggestions to the company. There's plenty of times I'm watching like, ah, I would have done that instead. You know, I even texted WWE VP of Creative Writing at Kosuke at one point after a match and said, you know what, next time, what if you did this, that, and the other thing? It's so easy to watch from backstage because I don't have to do anything. After high school, as college freshmen sometimes do, they go back to high school and visit their old teachers and say, hello and walk around. You know, it's like the pressure's off because you're not expected to do any work. You're just there to enjoy it.
speaking on the prospect of John Moxley returning to GCW owner of the company, Brett Lauderdale told the Business of the Business podcast, yeah, one thing about Mox's run. I know there are a lot of people that wish that he could have been at every show, but we have to be realistic here. This guy's one of the top stars of a weekly television wrestling company, and he's not going to be able to make every show. He has commitments, real life commitments, and professional commitments that extend beyond GCW. So, as I saw it, I loved him being champion for that entire time because it made it seem extra special every time he would come and every time he would have a match put the title on the line to me it seemed like a bigger deal than had you been there every week or every show or once a month but yes it was also significant having him for obvious reasons he's one of the biggest stars in the world so to see him wearing our title belt and wearing gcw sweatshirts on tv and doing crazy matches for us when he doesn't have to do them it obviously is a big deal for gcw and it opens eyes it takes us beyond the indie wrestling bubble and introduces new fans to us that would never wise otherwise know what gcw is and furthermore i mean when other wrestlers aw wrestlers or just top name international talent talent or even just top indie wrestlers when they see Moxley willing to come and do GCW knowing that the guy doesn't need the money it's not about a payday and they see that he does it because he wants to be there obviously it helps GCW's credibility and helps our reputation amongst wrestlers and inside the business so Mox again his contributions to GCW also extended beyond the ring when asked if he had prior knowledge of Moxley signing a five-year extension with AEW he said I had no idea I've had very little interaction with AEW itself over the years and booking Moxley, I never spoke to AEW, so it was always just Mox talking to him, and him, I guess, handling whatever needed to be handled with AEW. But yeah, I'm sure things are going to change now. I don't think we'll see him as frequently, but I do think we'll see him again. I think if there comes a time where there's somebody he wants to wrestle or a show he wants to be a part of, I think he'll be there. I think he'll let me know in much the same way that he's let me know over the last whatever it was 399 days. He'll shoot me a text and say, what do you got coming up? in this month or when are you going to be in this place and that's how it would often come together so i wouldn't be surprised if i hear from him again in a few months or six months or whatever sometime in the next year i wouldn't be surprised if he comes back again and stops in for another event but again he does have priorities and i don't expect it rather i wouldn't be surprised but i'll continue to look at it as a bonus anytime he comes around Speaking on his Monday Mailbag podcast, former WWE referee Mike Chioda had this to say about CM Punk possibly making a WWE comeback if his contract is bought out by AEW. I wouldn't let go of CM Punk because from a business point of view, whether they start pinning Punk down the road a year or two from now or whatever they do with him, I think they'll take him away from AEW. That would be a huge draw in ratings on TV for WWE if they get Punk back. Kevin Owens is getting a great contract of 3 to $5 million a year. There's a lot of guys getting contracts and getting paid. Roman Reigns is probably making 8 to 10 million a year. If Punk came in making 5 million a year, whatever it is, I would. I'd put all my differences aside and say, let's do business. While she has not been on WWE programming since this summer where she and Naomi would relinquish their tag title and walk out of the company, Sasha Banks was spotted hanging out with Bayley and other WWE stars backstage for the promotion's recent live event in Mexico City. According to Dave Meltzer, she was a WWE guest at the show last night in Mexico City and was hanging around with Bayley. AAA wrestler Mamba took both to a restaurant and bar. One would think that means relations between the WWE and Banks aren't negative right now. Speaking of that recent live event, a fan apparently jumped the barricade in a video as the Wrestling Observer pointed out that there was a scary incident at the WWE's house show in Mexico City on October 30th that angered some fans in attendance. Ketsali Bones, host of WWE Aura on YouTube, wanted to give an unplanned spot on the show to one of her friends, a wrestling YouTuber from Spain named Fallback, who was at ringside. Fallback jumped the barricade after Ketsali encouraged him to do so. Byron Saxton called security to catch him, but Ketsali 
ordered them not to do anything to him. Byron Saxon's face was one of fear and then of anger with Quetzali for the situation of which he clearly had no knowledge. Fallback attempted to get into the ring, but Quetzali angrily yelled at him to leave and return to ringside. Fallback apparently asked Quetzali for a shout out at the show and to go for him at ringside, because if she did that, he would give her a gift. But Fallback's plan would have been to get into the ring, declare his love for her, and steal a kiss from her, regardless of Quetzali's response. A lot of fans who don't know who the YouTuber was thought it was a very dangerous situation and they were angry about what happened. Others have attacked Fallback because they considered that he planned an act of sexual harassment and asked for WWE and WWE Mexico to no longer be related to this YouTuber. Fans have also criticized Quetzali for his attitude as what she did was seen as an approval to other fans to violate the security of the event. Fallback has done free collaboration in Spanish videos on the WWE YouTube channel and Fox Sports Latam, and during WrestleMania 37, he was watching the show with Quetzali Bones. In a vlog, it was shown how Quetzali tried to kiss him on the mouth, but Fallback did not notice. Since then, fans have pressured Fallback into a relationship with Quetzali. When it comes to a potential lawsuit AEW could file against CM Punk for his involvement in the brawl backstage at All Out, Dave Meltzer said on Wrestling Observer Radio, As far as I know, there aren't, but that doesn't mean that there won't be. I suppose it's possible on the other side too, but I have not heard that. The key to this is so much of the stuff has not come out, and I don't know that it ever will. Nick Houseman had this to say about AEW potentially mentioning the situation. I don't think we'll ever hear anything from AEW on the subject. I mean, maybe in years, we might, but I don't expect to just from the fact that we haven't heard anything from AEW yet. Houseman would add that he has heard from Punk's camp saying, Cash does not seem to be an issue for this guy. He's got inroads in Hollywood going on right now. Stephen Amell certainly shining him up with what they're trying to do over on Star's Heels right now. I have a lot of people that have known Punk that say to me, this guy's never going to wrestle again. In some unfortunate news for NXT stars, WWE has released some more talent as PW Insider reported. Bodie Hayward, who had been seen most recently in Andre Chase University and was a standout in those vignettes with his facial reactions, he was apparently written off TV with the storyline being Duke Hudson has taken him out. Sloan Jacobs, 19-year-old talent from PA, who had worked the independent scene as the notorious Mimi before signing with NXT in March 2022. The Monster Factory trainee had appeared on NXT in the Women's Breakout Tournament earlier this year as well as Level Up. She worked the NXT Live events over the weekend. Erica Yan, originally from from Shanghai, China, Yan signed last year and began appearing on NXT TV in late 2021. She last wrestled for the brand in September 2022. Damaris Griffin, a 26-year-old talent from Texas who made several appearances on NXT Level Up. He had not even been wrestling for a year with the company. Ru Feng, who signed a WWE NXT deal a year ago and had made appearances on 205 Live and NXT TV in an enhancement role. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.